Dr. Murphy, thanks, thanks for, for joining us. Um, I'm wondering, first of all, what made you go into the field you're in? Well, I, joined, I decided to go into pediatrics uh, to become a pediatric cardiologist. That was when I was a third year medical student. And then I had the task of setting my life up to accomplish it. Uh, it was during uh, the summer between my third and fourth years, I was doing a, a stint in uh, Congenital Heart, Heart Hospital in London and decided that was going to be my field. So I came back to the United States, finished medical school, and uh, did my pediatric residency, and then sought about uh, applying for pediatric cardiac fellowships. And in 1977, uh, I uh, went to the Children's Hospital in Boston. At one point, you know, we've been talking to a lot of surgeons here. Had you wanted to be a surgeon? The, the thought had uh, entered my mind, uh, but it was actually during that rotation uh, in England uh, that I really enjoyed the, uh, the medical side of things because of the totality in which we're involved with the uh, families. Uh, and so that's why I chose uh, the route that I took. What does that mean, the totality in, in the involvement with families? As pediatric cardiologists, we're one of the first physicians involved with the uh, child. Once the diagnosis is made, we make the diagnosis. Uh, and then from that moment uh, on, uh, we're involved in the, uh, in really in the total care of, of the patient, deciding uh, what the proper treatment is uh, and when it should be applied and, uh, and referring patients for surgical uh, intervention because obviously, uh, at least 70 to 80 percent of anatomical cardiac malformations require some kind of operative intervention. So does this mean, in, in, you know, this is, uh, I, I'm not in the medical field, does that mean the, the uh, pediatric cardiologist hands the child over to the surgeon? I mean, you have to have some kind of special relationship? It's obviously preferable if you have a special relationship with a surgeon, and, and fortunately, uh, at the centers that I've been uh, involved, uh, that is indeed the case. I've had the opportunity to work with uh, at least two preeminent uh, cardiac surgeons through, through my lifetime. So who are they? Give me, uh, give me, give me your recollections of dealing with the surgeon. Well, I, I should say I, I went to Children's Hospital in Boston in the summer of 1977. Uh, I was recruited there by Dr. Alex Natis, who was the chairman of cardiology at that time. Uh, and that was five years after Aldo Castaneda had uh, come to Boston. Uh, and of course, uh, he was a major influence uh, on not only cardiac surgery, but cardiology. And the partnership which uh, he and Dr. Natis uh, forged uh, was just all-encompassing. Uh, and then the, the next person who came along up the uh, proverbial ladder was uh, Bill Norwood. So what are your recollections of working with Bill Norwood? I mean, what did that mean? I mean, I know he's, he's a guy who created the Norwood procedure. You know, it, it's that kind of thing. What did it mean to you? Well, it, it was part of a continuum of, uh, of work in those days in terms of trying to refine what had already been done to get it better and to attack things that had uh, defects that had not yet been attacked uh, and, and try to forge ahead. I sort of think of it as a, an imaginary uh, book of pediatric cardiology where the various defects are listed sequentially and there was a check mark in front of all of them with the exception of hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Even though a lot of the uh, defects that were uh, being operated on in those days were being done so imperfectly, uh, hypoplastic left heart syndrome was the one uh, where children were not uh, treated. And Bill certainly was one of the strongest advocates that that made absolutely no sense. Well, right. A lot, not a lot of people. Uh, there were several people who didn't support him. Well, it's, it's more than that. Uh, it, it, you have to ask the question of why. There were all of the other single ventricle lesions that you can list uh, were being operated on. Hypoplastic left heart patients were not. I think it was because it was a very formidable task to try to figure out how to reroute the circulation or the plumbing, if you will, uh, to be able to utilize or get to the stage uh, where the Fontan or Kreutzer operations of uh, right ventricular bypass uh, could be uh, achieved. And that could be done easily with a simple palliative procedure in some of the uh, lesions, like tricuspid atresia, which was the very first uh, that Dr. Kreutzer and uh, Dr. Fontan operated on. Uh, but hypoplastic left heart, as I said, was a formidable challenge. 